What's going on everyone? Welcome, welcome. And today I want to discuss something about you no know, economics and wealth and being rich. And just some things that I've noticed, right? <clears throat> when people talk about the difference between being rich and being wealthy, you know, you always wonder, okay, well, what's the difference between being rich and wealthy? And I remember uh, Chris Rock, Chris Rock, the comedian, one of his uh, comedy shows, he made a joke about, you know, the difference between rich and wealthy. He was saying how Shaq is rich, the people who own the team are wealthy, you know, like how rich you can lose in a night, wealth is generational. And that stuck with me. It made me think about, well, are there any other differences? Uh, between being rich and wealthy and from what I've learned from studying you know, people who they consider rich and wealthy I've come up with an expression and it goes rich people hold wallets wealthy people hold hands I'm gonna say it again Ooh, almost got stung by me <laughs> rich people hold wallets wealthy people hold hands and what that means is, if you think about people who are wealthy or throughout history, whoever, the pe whoever people are considered wealthy throughout history, you may think about one thing, families. Families, relationships, partnerships, more than you hear about them buying things. The more than you hear about monetary gain, you hear more about relationships, who married who, who's friends with who, who went to school with whom, like stuff like that. So, we hear about people who are rich, you hear about their net worth. You hear the net worth of people who are rich. You know, this person has such and such amount of money, they make this amount of money, they do this job, such and such like that. But when it comes to wealthy, you hear many about wealthy families. You hear about this person married this person from this family and that family owns such and such and this and that family owns <clears throat> a land or they're like the heiress or the heir to this fortune you hear the word fortune when it comes to wealthy anytime you hear about a wealthy family or a wealthy person you always hear the term fortune okay you rarely hear that when it comes to a rich someone who they consider rich Fortunes are passed down. Wealth is passed down. Rich can be one or two generations. So that's why I say rich people hold wallets. Wealthy people hold hands. Holding hands can mean one, marriage. It can mean business partnership. It can mean friendship. It can just, it, it, it's, it's bartering at the highest level. See, bartering isn't just for quote unquote poor people. Bartering, for those who don't know, is the exchange of goods and services without the use of money. Okay? For example, me as an artist, right? Let's say I'm a quote unquote starving artist, right? And Somebody owns a restaurant. I'm just give an example. Somebody owns a restaurant, and they say, "Hey, I like your artwork. If you can put, if you can make artwork in my restaurant, I'll pay you a food. Stuff like that. It's exchange for goods and services. Okay? You have something. I have something. We need it. All right? You get. You got. You have rice. I have meat." You need meat, I need rice. So instead of exchanging exchange money, like dollar bills and coins and gold and precious metals of that nature, you exchange the actual items. That's bartering. <clears throat> well, bartering can also, bartering is also for the wealthy, for the rich and wealthy. All right, well, I need, I need some item, I, I, I need, I need, such and such amount of cobalt. You need such and such amount of oil. 
we exchange that. I need oil, you need cobalt, boom, we got that, boom, all right? So, and it all be by the handshake. Now, the handshake, the small meetings, and I always say, the smaller the room, the larger the deal. The smaller the room, the larger the deal. Now, when you see in a large room, that's just a formal setting, but the actual meeting, the actual agreement, normally happens in a small private area between the two parties. You know, a couple of people are there, and then it's officially announced in a big setting. All right? Another example, example of that. The whole Jay-Z NFL partnership, right? We saw the footage of the interview at Rock Nation, um, the Rock Nation building, headquarters. However, when they were talking, you didn't hear them talking about what we're going to do, what, what, what the details were. When they were talking in the Rock Nation office, they were talking as if the deal had already been made and we're just formally announcing it. I bet you any amount of money that the actual conversation was held in a small room with very limited people in that room that know the ins and outs of the true conversation. Okay? Now, that was also an exchange of goods and services. NFL needs something. Rock Nation needs something. Well, NFL needs something more. So they came to Rock Nation. Hey, I need this. Can you provide this? Well, all right, well, we, we, can, we can work on We can hash out the details, you know, face-to-face, -face, all that stuff. So, once again, the rich hold wallets. The rich care about the money. The, wealth, the wealthy care about the relationships. The relationship is what lasts long. Relationships go past money. The rich worry about the money. The wealthy worry about the relationship. So like I said, the rich hold wallets. The wealthy hold hands. A handshake, a hug, those gestures can seal a deal better than any amount of money in a wallet. The rich hold wallets. The wealthy hold hands. Okay? Hope y'all following that. Hope y'all picked up picked up on that. I'll catch you all later. Peace.